All right, when I stopped the video, um, I put the components in, and the reason why I did that uh, for the second channel, rather than showing you all live, putting the components in while I was video, um, I had a great deal of difficulty of uh, concentrating and getting the right uh, pins of the transistor into the right holes and orientating the uh, diode correctly and so forth. And then trying to keep everything in focus on the uh, um, camera. So I just figured it'd be easier to place the components in. I have not soldered them. Oops, I have not soldered them. And just to uh, point where they went. Okay, first thing I would like you to notice is the orientation of the transistors. You've got the heat conducted surface pointing towards my finger or my finger pointing on both transistors. That means that the left, uh, the right side of this transistor, I uh, use a pointer here, this side of the transistor that I'm tapping is the emitter on both, and that has to go to ground. And if I turn the board over, this here is that I'm tracing is all ground, and there's the emitter of one transistor. I'm pointing to the, uh, pointing to it. The transistor that I just plugged in, this guy for channel 2, its emitter is going to this wire uh, right here that's running to ground. It's coming through a hole and this wire is butting up right against the transistor lead. I haven't pushed it all the way in yet. And that, that'll be soldered. So emitter and emitter on both transistors go straight to ground. The middle lead on both transistors is the collector. These are MPN transistors, it's the collector. And on the second one, it's going to the to the base of the first transistor. I call a single channel that transistor, that's the first transistor, the primary. That's the one that gets hot. This one doesn't really get hot at all. It's just a trigger. And it goes into one of the holes that I've drilled um, that's connected to the base of transistor 1. So the collector of transistor 2 gets connected to the base of transistor 1. Base of transistor 1 also has a resistor connected to it, which will be one of the input sources. Now, we haven't put the cables on yet. The diode for channel 2, the project uh, resistor number two, the diode right here. Again, the anode, that's the positive part of the diode, goes to the ground plane. And that ground plane that I made there, there's a wire coming through. I used one of those holes that I drilled. And when I do all the soldering, the anode of, of the second diode will get soldered to the ground plane. The cathode of the second diode goes to the base of the transistor. Transistor number two. So there's transistor number two, and I'm pointing to the base lead. And underneath the base lead is on a land that's connected to the um, cathode of the diode. Also, on the, also connected to the base lead of the second transistor is a resistor. And here's that resistor. I've plugged it in already. Nothing's been soldered yet. And here's that resistor. Again, hopefully you can blow the video up and you can see these details. But I've followed this schematic, this one right here, schematic number two, identical. And I've used the existing LAM patterns on the circuit board to um, have a place to solder components to, drill a few extra holes and so forth. One thing that I didn't mention before was this ground plane. Hopefully you can see it. This ground plane that I'm pointing to, let me use the back part of this, it's easier, that, be, that I made, it's got three holes in it. That was separated, um, I, I, I didn't talk, tell you, I cut a, uh, a line on the other side. I actually took that extra um, copper foil and made two surfaces, one for ground and one for connecting um, the base of transistor 2 uh, to a 
one end of a diode and one end of a transistor. It's all, it's been isolated. There's a thin line in there. You can't see it. And I used an ohm meter to ensure that I had severed and cut the LAM pattern well enough to make my own separate pads. I didn't mention that before. I apologize. All right. So now I'm going to push these components in a little bit better. There's the, there's the diode. And I'm pushing it down. And the resistor, I had to mount uh, vertically one end and just stuck the wire through the hole in the other. I'm going to push the transistor down. Give me some leads to work with. And when I solder that, all except the two trigger wires will be um, mounted. And we'll do the two trigger wires uh, in a few minutes. In a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm not a professional video maker. I just hope this all works for you people. Okay, I've soldered, I've soldered everything down um, with the exception of this one transistor wire. And it's just there. And it's going through a bare spot on the um, circuit board. And I'm going to be bringing one end of one of the trigger cables right next to it, another hole I've drilled and they'll get soldered together. Uh, that hopefully will become clearer. There's still um, a whole pad on this ground plane that I've made, and that'll be the ground for the, uh, the trigger pad, uh, I mean the trigger wire. And everything has been mounted. I did a visual check. It's not, I mean, it really sounds like I did a lot of work here, but you can, s hopefully uh, it's clear enough. You can see that, um, I've added um, only two components for each stage, and the two components was a 1.2 resistor, 1.2K resistor, and a diode. By the way, the diode was a 914. I don't know why I had a memory block. Uh, a 1N914. A nice little uh, um, diode to use for this. Very, very cheap. They cost about uh, eight cents a piece. Um, and for the second transistor, uh, which represents the second trigger. Um, I it, there were three components, including the tr the transistor, and it does not have to be the same transistor you use for the primary. It can be a simple switching transistor, like I said, a two N two 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 from Radio Shack or a thirty nine oh four two N thirty nine oh four, and of course it had its uh, diode protection and another one point two K resistor connected to the base. And again, you're going to, if you have a different circuit board, you're going to have to work out your own scheme. I'm giving you how I did it. Trying to use as much of the LAM patterns on there. Had to drill little holes, had to do a little cutting with an X-Acto knife to create uh, some pad space that wasn't being used and so forth. All right. Now we're going to do the wires for the two trigger uh, triggers, and we should be pretty close to done. And then I'll do a video uh, on using the plasma ball. So... Um, in two channel mode, single in two channel mode. All right, I'm going to stop this and get set ready to show the rest of uh, the assembly. All right, here we are. Uh, we have to prepare the trigger wires. So as I had mentioned earlier, I had gone down to uh, the dollar store and picked up these audio cables. They're a dollar at the dollar store, or you can pay a buck and a half at uh, other discount stores, the most I've seen these things go for um, are two bucks. Unless you go to Radio Shack. I think they'll last 12 or 29.50 or something like that, whatever. <laughs> just kidding around. So you can separate the wires or you, you can just leave them together, but you're going to have to remove um, this little part here, which is just something to keep the wires together, bound together, because you're going to be sticking these through into this housing. So the first thing I'll do is I'll remove one end uh, of the stopper. And I just use an X-Acto knife, and I'm cutting into it. You'll see me break it off in just a second. Using a, oh, by the way, in that I didn't mention it, but you've, at one point in time you saw the, the um, uh, drill that I was using. There was a very tiny uh, bit on there, just enough to drill holes into the circuit board. Uh, so you might want to get yourself a drill bit like that so you can 
Um, and take the other end off. Okay, so I took this stopper off. Took this stopper off. I'm going to throw it in my trash barrel. And yes, off come one end. Gone. So now I have a cable and I'm going to strip these strip these in a second. And put those over in the pile. Now there's a lot of ways to strip wires. I'm going to give you a suggestion. You can do it your way, um, which has worked for you in the past. And I'm going to take, uh, I split the wire, just pulled it apart. I've got to clean both ends off. I use a soldering iron. Uh, it's a technique that doesn't nick the wires. These wires in here aren't that, uh, they're pretty fragile. They're, they're not that hefty. So I use a soldering iron and I spin the cable against the hot end of the soldering iron and rip it off. Now I've got uh, ground wire and a white wire. Um, being the center connector and the ground wire being the negative. And I do that on both. And this way I ensure that I do not um, nick the wire. And there I've, got it, I've done them both. And I even do it on the white wire inside here on each channel. So I'm pulling that away from all those grounds. And I'm going to heat that. And pull that off. And do it on the other one. So that's how I strip wires on fragile, fragile stranded wire. Okay. I'm going to put the soldering iron down. And I'm going to twist these uh, nice and tight, make very fun, so they're not all stranded all over the place. And do the same to both wires. These are going to go. These wires are going to go through a hole in the side of the plasma ball. Now, I think that this might be more than a lot of you want to uh, tackle. Uh, it might be too much. Making this video, I've spent almost two hours so far, but when I do one at a time, I get it done in about 30 minutes. Uh, when I was doing one channel, I was getting one channel done in about 10 minutes. One channel is really easy because you don't have to figure out any uh, uh, where the holes go for extra parts that never were there before and so forth. Okay, um, I'm going to use uh, my holder here and I'm going to put a thin coat of solder on those wires as thin as I can get it just so they won't fray when I'm poking them through the hole. Holes. Plural. Okay, should be doing this offline, but I didn't. So you get to see a, a wannabe pro at work. I'm not a pro. Okay, there we go. Where do you punch them through on the plasma ball frame? That is a big question. Well, here, this is a hole here for the switch. This is a hole here for the power uh, connector. And so what I do is I go opposite the switch and I prepare a hole to pass the wires through. And how do I do it? I take a pointed um, X-Acto knife and I don't even use a drill and I just start spitting it where I want it about the same level as, uh, the, about the, same level as the power plug and the switch level about halfway up in the base of the transistor and watch what happens in a few seconds. Never do a drill 
um, too awkward, too hard. And now I've already punched through and I'm doing a nice hole. With this, you know, almost any exacto knife with a sharp point will do. You can see the hole there. And I use this exacto knife as a drill. Not a lot of magic there. And I make the hole enough, the hole big enough to get the two wires through. In actuality, I make the hole big enough so I can put a grommet in there and stick the wires through a grommet. And it just looks better, more professional. Uh, the wires won't get frayed on the sharp edges of the plastic and so forth. So I think I have the hole big enough for the wires to go through. Barely. And it's got to be a little bit bigger because I've got to put a grommet in there. And hopefully I have some left. Okay. The wires will certainly go through there. I'm making a mess. Go up and get my grommets. Reach up right over here and find a grommet that I find or feel that will be the appropriate size. I think I found the appropriate size. There's an appropriate size grommet. And I'm going to stop the video and put it in because sometimes I can take five minutes just getting this grommet through and getting everything nice and neat. I'll come back. Okay, I got the grommet mounted. I've got the wire cable going through. I've got the two ends right here. And we're going to attach one to tr trigger channel uh, one and one wire to trigger channel two. I like to, you don't have to do this, but my convention is I have been using on the red and white wires, red for channel one, two for channel two. Channel one drives the power transistor that does all the work. Channel two just drives a, a secondary trigger transistor. Okay, so um, come over here. The primary hot transistor that actually turns this uh, transformer on and off to fire the high voltage to trigger the plasma inside the plasma ball has a transistor coming off the base. It's this one right here. Okay, it's this one right there, the one at the back end of that, closest to the back end of that first transistor. That first transistor is the one closest to this edge, uh, the edge with the switch on it, and so forth. And there's a, a there's then the other end of that transistor, the under that end, end of that transistor goes to a land. It's this land right here. I hope you can see that. And there's two holes. I only need one. Um, and I will connect the hot lead of the red chain, uh, the red cable, I'll call the hot lead, which would be the center lead, uh, one, to one of those lands. And I'll connect the other one to the ground plane that I created earlier. There's a hole there for the ground plane. You can either make one big hole or two small holes. Your choice in how you want to do that. Okay, um, I'm going to connect both wires and I'm going to stop the video when I do that. It's just, uh, I'm just going to do it and I'll, I'll come back when it's all ready to actually bolt every all the pieces back together. Okay, I have all the uh, hard work done. It is now just a matter of putting the unit together. I have the cable um, connected to the board. Actually, it's two cables. And what I'm going to do now is to reassemble it. Now, in actuality, while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk. In actuality, if you have a oscilloscope or a signal strength meter, you can check it before you button it up. I have already done this. I did this during intermission. <laughs> when I wasn't recording, I went and verified that the unit worked. And it worked nicely. So I would recommend that if you do have a scope, use it. 
and you'll see how I use it when I give you a uh, demonstration of the plasma ball, the two channel one, and I would suggest that you uh, use it exactly as I do, and you'll be able to check it before you button, button everything up. It, it, it just would save you uh, taking it apart again and troubleshooting it and trying to figure out what's wrong. Okay, I think I have it. It's on this particular model, there's only three screws and that hold it on this board onto the face plate or bottom plate. So don't forget to put the uh, the little don't forget to put the little um, dressing uh, tube back into the bowl. It does two things. One, it makes it look pretty, and two, it holds the um, metal. There's like steel wool up in the very top of that. Up in the very top. Uh, it holds that in so it won't fall out. And the top of this high voltage probe actually touches the steel wool inside. I have often thought about putting the slug in this whole thing and seeing how that works. Um, but I suspect that I will not get the uh, Brooklyn currents. I suspect it will just ionize the gas. But more experiments to be had down the road. Okay, while I was um, putting this together and doing some different experiments, testing things out and so forth, I was thinking, boy, there are a lot of people who are going to want one of these, but they just can't put them together. They just don't have the, uh, the expertise. Uh, they're just not used to building kits or whatever. And this really isn't a kit. And I was thinking, how can you help them out? I don't want to sell these units. And there's a couple of reasons why. Um, I think the main reason is, is that I've, I have had several people that I've given units to um, uh, blow them up. And they blow them up because they don't listen to the directions that I suggest of not running at any more than 35% duty cycle. And they run at 100% duty cycle and they cook the transistor. Then they send it back to me, and I get in this perpetual loop just because they didn't listen. I have uh, four. I have four units, three units presently running. They've been running for months. I don't ever blow them up because I follow my own rule. Um, and I could make a circuit board that would totally solve that problem and redesign. Um, then, then I'd have to take the uh, transformer off the old board. It, I would take a uh, a half hour job and probably turn it into a 15 minute job with a, a circuit board pre-designed and with so the extra protection and so forth but now I'm talking about making an investment and I don't know if anybody would be interested in buying it uh, to cover that investment so this is what I'm going to do here, the unit's all finished by the way oops over here excuse me unit's all finished the cable the plug and so forth uh, on and off switch if you uh, if you want help with having your unit done, you can drop ship you can drop ship them to me. Uh, contact me first by either email, phone, or however, and uh, we'll discuss uh, you sending me the bulbs on trust, and I will modify them. I will add the uh, the components that uh, don't come when you drop ship the plasma ball. Um, you don't get a power supply. You don't get uh, the connectors, and there's there's quite a there's uh, another ten dollars worth of components in here, over and above the uh, plasma ball. I'll provide all those and ship it back to you um, for fifty bucks, and that will include shipping. So my 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 labor is worth more than twenty five dollars, but that's about where it, where it would be at. I don't expect that there'll be many of you that'll take me up on that, and that's fine. Um, I, I just want everybody to get aboard and have access to using these things. 
Now the first thing I notice when I put this together is that the hole doesn't line up for the power plug very well. So there must be something slightly shifted in here. So I have to open this back up and see what's not quite uh, aligned properly. Not a big deal, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to close this down, and the next video you will see will be uh, me testing this. Um, I'll put this back uh, off, off camera, and uh, I'll do another video of actually showing you how it works. So with that, my friends, uh, have yourself a fine day, and uh, catch the next uh, video sequence.